Hi everyone, in a few of my recent videos I've shown this AC wattmeter and a lot of people have been asking questions about it. Now it's branded Firefly but it's not made by them. The only reason why it's branded is because they use these themselves for their internal testing. This is actually made by another company and it's known as the LPT200. You can find this on eBay, AliExpress, all the major online shopping websites. Now in my older videos you would have seen this AC wattmeter and this one here. And although they all give similar results, this one here is better for a number of reasons and I'm going to show you why today. So let's start with how the power comes into the unit. You have this wire here. Now many people know this as a kettle lead or the proper name I believe is an IEC C13 power cable. So that just plugs into the back and provides the power. Then on the top here we've got a bit that slides out and we've got two different adapters that fit in here. We've got the E27 which is the large screw type bulb and then this smaller screw type bulb. I can't remember what it's called but we all know what it is. So they just slide in there and then you can plug in a lamp and test it straight away. So let's just do that first. So when we first turn on the unit we'll see the voltage of the AC. 233.3 volts fluctuating a little bit. If we screw in our bulb or our lamp you can see the lamp turns on and it shows us how much power it's consuming, 11.83 watts. So we've got our power usage, our voltage, our current, the power factor, and then how much it consumes in kilowatt hours per year, and then the cost to run this per year. Now I base this on the lamp running for 8 hours a day. Um, with an estimated cost of 10.5 pesos per kilowatt hour and that's 365 days a year so that's roughly how much it would cost you. Now in practice this rate per kilowatt hour varies per area and it's a little bit more complicated in the Philippines because your kilowatt hour rating is based on how much power you use for the whole month so that can actually fluctuate but give or take that's a rough idea of how much it would cost you per year. So you've got this nice vibrant screen, everything is shown, it takes into account the power factor. Now the power factor isn't really that important for residential users because we only get charged for our kilowatt hour. We don't get charged for any power factor correction or anything like that so for big commercial buildings where you're being billed differently for your electricity you might want to know your power factor but for residential users it doesn't really make a difference and that's why those little power savers that you plug in the socket at home that are meant to save you money in your electricity bill they don't do anything for you as a residential user because we don't get charged based on the power factor we only get charged on kilowatt hours so when you see those things that say like oh plug this into your socket and you'll save you know 2,000 pesos a year or something, they're not true. If you're a residential user, it doesn't make any difference, so don't waste your money on them. Now, one thing to know when you're using a watt meter like this is that these two terminals here are live. So if you touch those, you're gonna get a shock, potentially it could kill you. So when you're not using this, best thing to do is put over this plastic sleeve. And the important thing to note as well is there's a switch on the back, and this is a double pole switch. So when you turn it off, both of those are completely disconnected from the mains AC, at least on my model. I still wouldn't recommend touching them to test it, but it is meant to be a dual pole switch. And let me show you what that means. Let me cover this up quickly. If we put my multimeter into continuity mode, you can hear when continuity is made, it makes a beep. Now, if we test the socket here, let me slide off this top. You'll see that there's no continuity between this AC input and either of these pins and likewise on this input and either of these pins but if we flick the switch we should now have continuity so you can see that goes through and that goes through on the other side but when the switch is off it's dual pole so there is no AC going inside on either side so that's a nice little touch that wouldn't necessarily be inside every device that you buy but I like the fact that it's a dual pole switch now aside from plugging these into the top you can also connect a load at the back here and measure that and it also comes with this wire here for testing these LED tubes now these are replacement tubes for the older style ones but this one is LED based so let's go ahead and test that so I'll plug this wire into the back here now something to note is that I'm pretty sure these are designed that one goes on one end and one goes on the other but on my tube this one here from Philips I have to put both of them on one side although one goes on one pin and one goes on the other so do be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to blow up one of your older style tubes this is an LED tube so if I turn it on you can see the Philips tube has come on and we're currently measuring 16.97 watts and our power factor, cost per year, etc. So you can connect loads at the back here and you can test tubes using the included wires here. 
And of course it's not just for testing light bulbs or lamps, you can actually test anything that plugs into the AC. In fact this is rated for up to around 2500 watts or around 10 amp. So very high rating. Um, let's try this AC fan here and I've actually got a funny story about this. When I went to the store I was actually looking for a fan which consumes very low power and there's actually a big difference in quality. Some of them consume a lot of power but they don't generate much wind. So I took my watt meter along to the store, the hardware store, and I tested each fan and this is the one that I ended up buying. So yeah it's actually quite useful. So we'll start by putting it on the low setting and I've pointed it away because otherwise it's probably going to mess with the audio. So if we look at the watt meter here we can see it's measuring 11.5 watts and if I put it on the high setting you can see it consumes around 14.6 watts and again we can work out roughly how much that would cost us to run per year if we were running it for 8 hours a day and if we were paying 10.5 pesos per kilowatt hour. So I mentioned earlier that this one is better than my older watt meters. Now why is that? Well first of all we've got all of the information shown on a single screen. With these ones I either have to press a button or I have to click through menus to get up the various different information. So straight away it's a lot nicer to have this screen. Now the next thing of course is that it comes with the lamp holders. I can just slide this in and then I can screw a bulb in there straight away. Whereas with these ones, I have to use an adapter like this, which holds a bulb. Not that big a deal, but it's nice that this one's already built in. Now another difference is the resolution on lower loads. If we screw in this bulb, you can see on this watt meter, it measures 10.81 watts. So 10.81, and then if we try with this watt meter, you can see it's much slower to update. Hopefully you can see the screen, it doesn't show very well, but because it's doing averaging every, I don't know, say half a second or something, it's much slower to update. It does eventually get there, but it also doesn't have the same resolution. We've only got 10.7 or 10.8, so we don't have the same resolution. Also, I don't think this one can show us the power factor. It can do some estimated cost per year, but yeah, it doesn't show us all the same information as the other one. And now let's try with this one here. So let's click watts, and you can see, again, it takes a little bit of time to get there, but it's much faster than the last one. But again, the resolution isn't very exact. We've only got like 10.6, 10.7. So not very high resolution, even on these smaller loads. Oh, and for anyone who's curious, I also had another watt meter before, which was made by Omni but it only lasted about six months and then it broke and trying to get them to fix it was absolutely impossible. So I decided I'm never gonna buy one of their watt meters again. So yeah, although this looks similar to the Omni watt meter that I had before, this is a different brand. And of course it's completely adjustable. You go into the settings, you can change the language, the currency unit, how many hours a day your load is gonna be running for, how much you're paying for your electricity, and then whether you want it to show the real cost or the annual cost. So if you put it on real mode, you could connect something like a, I don't know, say a fan, and then run it for 30 minutes, and it would tell you, okay, for that 30 minutes, this is roughly how much it's cost you to run it. I've got it on annual mode because that's just a little bit more useful for me. So I think I've shown you enough to give you an idea of how this thing works and why it's useful. Let's open it up and take a look inside. Now the unit's pretty easy to open, we just remove these four screws this side and again four screws this side. Once we remove the two sides, the unit just kind of opens up, so let's pull this apart and there you go. Now we can get a look inside. Now I'm not going to completely take it apart because it will just be too much work, I'll just show you around. Now something I forgot to mention earlier, that this input is fused, so let me show you that. We can pull out the fused drawer using a small screwdriver. And there you go, you can see it's got a small glass fuse and that's rated for 10 amp, so that's quite good. And there is continuity on the ground if we check, which is good because on a lot of you know gadgets that come out of China they don't really care much about the grounding, but this one is very you know high quality so they have followed that through. And if we look inside we can see all of the wires are properly crimped and they've got these isolating jackets over the top of them. So very neat and tidy inside and we've got a good thick wire which is needed because this is rated for up to 10 amp. Now what you might see is that it's got much smaller wires going up to the lamp holder here because of course your light bulbs aren't going to be as high current as something you might plug in here. So we do have smaller wires going to the lamp holder and then nice beefy thick wires going to this universal socket for when you're testing other loads. And on the board here you can see that's obviously the power supply for this unit itself. That's going to be dropping the high voltage AC down to something you know, more manageable in DC and then feeding this main board. So yeah, there you go. Very neat and tidy inside 
good thick wires, everything's properly crimped and you know these this one here, this universal socket has screw terminals. So yeah, very neat and tidy, a very impressive unit. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.